so in this module, I just want to go over, uh, kind of recap some of the um, calculations that will be done from the tensile test. Um, and so this is kind of a review of uh, maybe what you've done in MSC 202, uh, as well as uh, the kind of the theory in MSC 201. So we're just going to kind of go through using some of our sample data um, and calculate the various uh, properties that we're we're after. And so that would be elastic modulus, the uh, yield strength, tensile strength, and ductility. Um, and also we want to prepare the stress strain plots. So let's start with that because we need the stress strain plots for basically every part here. So you'll see that I have uh, force displacement data. Um, I've copied this over from the CSV file. And so I'm just going to go ahead and create the stress and, or sorry, let's do strain first. Um, and this is going to be in units of unitless or millimeters per millimeter. And then stress and units of megapascal. All right. And so how we calculate strain is, um, if you remember from MSEO 201 in your Callister book, uh, strain is defined as the displacement over the original length. And so we're going to take this displacement, right, or elongation, and then divide it by the original length. And I'm going to take the original length as 32 uh, millimeters for this calculation. And then if I'm using Google, Google Sheets, this will auto fill for me, or you can uh, double click on the square down here. Um, and then I'll do the same for stress. So stress. Um, if Again, if you remember uh, the equations from Callister, this is force uh, divided by original area. And in this case, uh, it's a rectangular cross-section of uh, uh, 6.3 millimeters width and uh, 3.1 millimeters in thickness. So that's my area. So this will have units of, if you kind of look at what we've got here, kilonewtons and millimeters. And so um, if we calculate it, it's probably not going to, to make any sense. Uh, but a more useful unit um, is uh, if we use newtons and millimeters squared, this translates to megapascal. And so if I basically um, multiply the force by a thousand to get newtons, this should give me megapascals. And I might have to fill. Let's do that again. Let's delete everything here. OK. So all right, so I've multiplied the force by 1,000 to get uh, newtons, and then kept the um, area in millimeters squared. So this is in millimeters, this is in millimeters. So if I calculate that and then extend it, uh, this should be in uh, megapascals, right? right now. So this is our quench sample. Uh, you can already see that there's really just a linear line. Um, there's a little blip here from uh, removing the, the extensometer, and there can be kind of a toe region at the beginning um, as um, it kind of uh, works out the um, any sort of slack in the system or um, the grip might slip slightly. So uh, you can always get a little non-linearity down here. Uh, but we should get the same thing if we plot stress versus strain now. So let's go ahead and just plot this again. Um, so again, I'm in Google Sheets um, uh, for this, and I'm going to create a uh, chart. And I'm just going to move it down here. Um, so this isn't really for, for uh, the, the lab report or anything. I'm just kind of graphing it for my own benefit. And I'm going to use a scatter uh, to show points. Um, you can also kind of change it a little bit here so I can get to do this. Um, and you see that, um, you know, it has the same form. We just have different units on stress and strain now. Okay. So that is, um, the basics here. Um, so now, um, we want to try to get, um, the modulus, uh, yield strength, tensile strength and ductility. So why don't we actually start with the last one I just mentioned there of ductility. And so ductility, if you remember correctly from, um, 
from Callister, from your equations there. Um, ductility is simply the strain at fracture, so over here, multiplied by 100, and that's the percent elongation, right? So basically what we can do for, for this then is we have the strain, if I go down to the last point here, right? If I just copy that over, So that's going to be equal to the strain at fracture multiplied by 100. And that gives us 13%. Uh, so basically, it is the length final minus length of initial over initial length. Uh, so you can also do this from measuring the length of the, the sample and then multiplying that by 100. Um, so that is our, our strain. So, or sorry, that is our percent elongation, which is a measure of ductility. Um, so the next one, let's go ahead and um, actually do it in reverse order then. So tensile strength or ultimate tensile strength, whatever you want to call it, uh, tends to have the same units as stress, so megapascals. And this is simply the maximum right on the curve. So basically, in this case, it's the uh, the fracture force uh, or the fracture stress. Uh, but in any case, it's the maximum value. And so one way you can do this is actually just to use the equation max, and then uh, use all the stress values. So this will give me the uh, the maximum there. And again, um, all of these sig figs don't really matter. So I'm just gonna get rid of a few of them here. All right. So, but it's just the maximum value of um, of stress. All right, uh, and then yield strength or YS sometimes again it has the same units is um, where you get deviation from linearity and you start to get plastic deformation, noticeable plastic deformation. Um, in this case, it's basically just. Uh, the elastic deformation. And so we really don't have much or any plastic deformation. And so um, I'm going to put that as NA for this. There really isn't any uh, in this example. So we'll come back to this in a second. Uh, and the last one we want to get is the elastic modulus E. And this typically is in gigapascals. All right, so let's look at that. So the elastic modulus is the slope of the elastic region. And like I said, it's basically this entire region. Um, there is a point where we take off the extensometer. And so I, I'm gonna exclude anything after we take off the extensometer. Uh, and so that's you know somewhere in the 2.9 range. And then you can see a little bit here initially um, cause uh, from kind of the material, the machine getting up to um, kind of steady state is there's some slack in the system. So I'm going to avoid this initial region. And so that might be uh, the first 0.25. Um, so if I kind of come down here uh, to the same thing here, I'll do the... Um, uh, so basically, I might make the cutoff of 0 0.01 and then go up to... Um, 0.9. So let's do that. 0 0.01. So I'm just going to come down here and kind of manually find that data. Okay, so 0 0.01. And then I'm going to copy all the way up to, to 0 0.9. That's a lot of data. Point, I, I believe it was 0 0.09. Sorry. That's my mistake. All right, so let's copy that, and let's actually make a new uh, a new sheet for this just to keep it straight. Oh, and uh, on this, if you do do that, uh, you'll probably want to uh, just paste the values. Um, so this is stress strain. 
So just so that we remember, sorry, strain stress in that order. And this is in, again, unitless or millimeters per millimeters. And then this is in megapascals. All right, so let's just plot this to see where we're at. See how, how, how linear it looks. So I'll make another chart. All right, so you can see it looks pretty good. There is a little bit of uh, a bowing, uh, so maybe we need to remove some more, but let's just kind of see where this gets us. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, all right, hopefully no more interruptions. Okay, so now um, we want to get the linear fit, right? Because we want to get the, um, it's the elastic modulus is the slope, and so that's stress over strain. Right? And so we get that by a linear fit. So we can go here to the data. Um, and then in this case, it actually automatically brings it up. And so then at the uh, format data point uh, below that, you'll see trend line. And so we can add a trend line um, to the data. And you can kind of see it here. It's a little hard to see, but uh, there. Um, all right. And so just to maybe see this a little better, turn it to uh, to red. All right, so you can see it's pretty good fit, but let's see how good it is. So down here uh, for uh, label, we can add uh, use equation, so it can tell us the equation up here. Um, and then we wanna see the R squared. So the R squared is 0.992, that's pretty good. Um, so let's see how, uh, how this data looks. All right, so the other way that you can do it is you can do it by equations as well. So if we want to put um, the slope, which is the elastic modulus, uh, it's going to be equal slope, and then the y data, comma, the x data. So there, you can see that we have the uh, slope calculation. All right. Um, so this uh, should be in megapascals, right? Because megapascals over unitless is just megapascals. Uh, so then we would probably want to get this in gigapascals. And you can see that by doing that, we divide by 1,000. And so right now we have the slope is... 13 gigapascals. So this is uh, steel, right? So clearly something's off in this calculation. Uh, if you know the uh, Young's modulus, you know that we should have a slope of roughly 200 gigapascals. So something's off here in uh, in my calculation. So let me go back and uh, uh, so this is real data, right? So I'm I'm not uh, fixing anything. So let's let's make sure that we have everything correct. All right, strain looks okay. The equation looks okay. And then this should have units of megapascals. Okay. Um, so it's possible that I grabbed the wrong data. So I'll have to check that. But let's for now just uh, keep in mind that this is uh, the values here are not correct, uh, but the general approach is good. So uh, we'll go uh, through and um, find the linear region and just kind of isolate that in whatever way you want to do. Um, and then calculate the slope either by graphic, graphic method or you can calculate it here. If you do it by equation, I, you, I m make sure that you always also calculate the R squared um, which I believe is RSQ, and the same thing for the data. Oops. Just to verify that you have a good fit. So I always recommend that you graph it no matter what, uh, so that you can tell how good of a fit. So I would definitely make sure you get both of these. Okay, so I'll take a break here for a second and I'll see if I can track down my error down what the error was, and I think it's just useful to, to show you this so you kind of understand where it comes from. This is the CSV file that I extracted the data from that you saw. Uh, so this is opened in Microsoft Excel. You see that we have, um, there's actually three samples in this data set, uh, but we're, I only looked at the first one, uh, and it gives you time, displacement, force, 
and tensile strain. So I use this placement, which is the crosshead, uh, basically the machine moving. However, if you remember from the extensometer video, we input the extensometer plug into the gate into the plug that was strain one. So we actually want to use the tensile strain uh, column instead of displacement. So displacement always is inherently low uh, because we're not accurately measuring the strain within the gauge. And so we're going to uh, replace the displacement data that I used with the strain. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy this and then move back to my graph here and paste it. And I'm going to fix, uh, basically replace it here, uh, the displacement data. And again, you might notice that it repeats over here because it starts over for a new test. So this is the second and third one that I just want to get rid of to start with the first. OK, so now you see that my force displacement is a little different because this is actually isn't displacement, it's strain in percent. And so when I um, want to get strain then, the strain is going to be equal to this, uh, but I'm actually going to divide by 100 so that it's not in percent. And then I'll do that for all the calculations. So this is going to affect some of the values that we have. OK. So now this is in strain, not in percent. OK. Um, so from here then, so this is our strain stress. Uh, and so you can see it's changed a bit here. Um, so now uh, if we go, kind of go back and look at our uh, where it failed, so this, if we go all the way to the bottom to see where it fractured, we see that we get uh, this value here, right? And so my elongation changed here. All right, so I only have 1.7. That also makes more sense. We shouldn't have a lot of elongation um, when it's a strictly elastic material. Um, this shouldn't have changed too much and it still it only has the stress values and then we didn't have a yield so we won't deal with that um, but our let's go back to our calculation of um, engineering or sorry elastic modulus and so in this case uh, you can see a little bit more slope here uh, that's that's happening and again this is the blip where it takes off the extensometer so we won't even use uh, up to that data so let's take everything up to that point and see how how good of a fit it is so that's zero zero seven five so again let's let's try this again zero zero seven so this and I just while I'm doing this um, keep in mind that there are um, other kind of, if you have a slightly different approach to doing this, feel free to do that. Um, but this is kind of the way I'm going to approach it. Oh, and again, paste special is the best way to uh, paste values. Okay. And so again, here um, with uh, with this kind of curve, uh, you see now that the, uh, the fit is maybe a little worse. No, it's still pretty good. Um, however, you can kind of see that it's not as great. Um, so to kind of get that better and better, um, you know, you are approaching the plastic region uh, up here. And so if you want to improve this fit, you'll, you will you can kind of adjust by taking different values. So let's say I only take 005. Uh, and just see what that looks like. So I remove everything else after 005. You can see that it's increasing the fit. The fit's getting better and better. So again, maybe let's say 003. Because you don't need, th this is still a, a lot of data points um, that you have. Let's try 003. Okay. 
All right, let's get rid of those now and go back up and see how, how good. So you can see it's getting closer and closer. The R squared value is getting better and better. Um, so that's just, again, something to consider. Make sure the fit is good uh, when you're when you're doing this. And that right, might mean um, either removing points uh, at the very beginning um, where there might have been some nonlinearity from uh, the startup of the machine or at the end where it's starting to deviate and become plastic. So I'm going to take this. This is pretty good. And so now you see that the value here is very close to 200. And so we're much uh, on a much better track for uh, for this. So again, that's how you get the, elast uh, the uh, elastic modulus or Young's modulus is you're gonna take the fit of the linear elastic region and the slope uh, is going to be your Young's modulus or elastic modulus. And then this is gonna, should be in the order of 200 gigapascals for our steel. All right, so, so far we've gotten, if we go back to our kind of page here, the uh, ductility, the tensile strength, we skipped the yield strength because this one didn't really yield. We uh, calculated the uh, Young's modulus from here. Um, and then now let's go back to the yield strength. So this one didn't really have the yield strength. So I'm actually going to um, calculate it from a different one. So this one I took from a different sample uh, that has the uh, uh, a yield point, right? So you can clearly see it's linear, and then you have the yield point, and then it becomes plastic. And so in this case, uh, this is known as yield point phenomena. Um, and the way that we define the yield the yield point from yield point phenomena, just for reference, is again from Callister, and we see that for this we take the lower yield point. So we basically take the value here as our strength, our yield strength. So after we create the um, stress strain plot, we can get the stress value uh, of this level, this lower yield point, and that is our yield point for this material. So that's one, one uh, type of material. The other is if you have a gradual transition, then you're gonna do that offset method if you remember. So you find the slope of the linear region and then offset it by 0 0.2%, 0 0.002. Um, and then you find out where that intersects the curve. So that's where you have, if you have the gradual yield point. So um, I would recommend for that, doing your elastic modulus calculation, finding that slope, and then basically plotting that line with a 0.2% offset and then basically just graphically determine where that intersects the curve. And so that's how I would approach uh, that uh, calculation. I have a better plot here to show you the offset method, the 0.2% offset. So you can see here that the transition between linear elastic and plastic is much more gradual. And so in, again, in that case, we use this offset method. So I've actually already calculated stress and strain, and I've calculated the slope as well. And you can see that here my slope is about 100, and, or sorry, 201 gigapascals. So my slope's here. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new column which has my offset. Um, and this is gonna be Y values. Um, and I'm gonna use the strain as my X values. So if I'm thinking about the equation of line, that's Y equals MX plus B. So I want to take M as my slope is over here. Um, it's covered up, I believe. <laughs> Sorry about that. Should be here. All right, something got mixed up, mixed up there. So let me try that again. All right, so equals, and then I go over to my, my, my slope. All right, there we go. And um, I want that slope to be constant throughout the whole thing. So if I go back, um, the way I can do that is put dollar signs um, before and after the letter. And so that fixes uh, the, the value there. You could also just rewrite it, but I think this is a more uh, useful way to do it. And then plus uh, y equals mx, the x values are strain, so I multiply it by that. And then plus, this is my offset, so I want to do 0.002. All right, and then I fill these values in. 
if I, whoop, sorry about that. If I double click, it should extend it all the way down. Um, and I've actually already plotted um, both of those series down here. So you, you'll notice that basically this is my slope and you get a lot of wa uh, wasted points after a certain point. So it's about 2000 uh, or so. So if I just delete those, cause it's not necessary cause it's showing me extra data that I don't need. If I go there, maybe up to around 2000 or so and just get rid of those. Okay, so now you can see that I have my original curve and then I have my offset. Um, and so this is my yield strength, right? Where they um, intersect. And so what I can basically do is just kind of try to find, um, I can zoom in and uh, uh, adjust these axes um, so that uh, here, let me see if I can find the axes. Okay, so I'm going to go from zero to, uh, what is that, maybe 0 0.001. Okay, so you can see that improved. Um, and then I can just kind of keep cutting it down so that I'm looking only at the intersection. All right, and then I can also look at my, you know, adjust my vertical axis uh, to 1,000. And then um, let's say 1400. Let's see what that gets us. And then I again, I can keep just kind of adjusting this so I can find more accurately. And again, there's there's other ways to do this um, that might be more more elegant. Um, but uh, this is the way I'm going to just kind of show you to see where it comes from. Keep messing up that. OK, and then All right, so you can kind of see that it's right here at this point. So you can also probably find the nearest point, but this is just over 1300. Um, and so that is our yield strength. That's uh, the intersection here is my yield strength. And so I'm gonna use that to, count, uh, to determine my yield strength. So hopefully that shows you um, how to calculate the Young's modulus, the yield strength, uh, tensile strength and ductility from our 4140 steel data.